Now today, I'm gonna to be getting rid of this fuel filter and we're gonna be cutting. I don't think we'll have to cut this. This is a return line, but we'll have to be cutting the feed, fuel feed line to install the K-tuned fuel system. So let me show that over here. So I got everything out of the box and set up. This is the line that comes off. So comes off of the fuel feed line on the car. So we're gonna cut the line on the car and then clamp this down to it. And then this will run to the filter right here. The filter will connect to the pressure regulator with this little guy here. We got a gauge for the regulator. And then we also have the return line here. And the return line hooks up to the regulator. So the reason you have to do this is because the K-series engines are returnless systems, so they only have one line running up to the engine on the RSX and TSX and any other K-series cars. So when you swap it into an EG or any other car that has a return line running in the engine bay, you're gonna have to use a regulator to have that, to hook up that return line. So this K-Tune kit is really awesome and it has all of the AN fittings instead of using like rubber lines and trying to save a few hundred bucks. You could do that. Um, I've seen VTech Academy do it and I did think about it, but I just really wanna do this once, have it, you know, and not have any issues with it later on. So that's where that is. I have some extra wire here from Powerwire USA. I, I love this. Yeah, I showed it in the last video, made in USA. The wire looks super high quality, so I'm hoping that will be really good for the alternator and starter. So I got a bunch of it just in case I want to rewire stuff, but I am waiting until I get the engine in the car to wire up the alternator and the starter just so I can get the routing correct. And I think, I'm thinking I'm just gonna hug it right along here, maybe even go under there and then bring it around front and try to make it look nice and kind of tucked away and clean. So I was really happy with how this turned out because I think once the engine's in, you won't really see it. And I wanted to relocate the fuse box, but I think I said this in another video. I think I'm just gonna leave it here. It looks like kind of, it doesn't really look like there's any room for it if you leave the heat and the air conditioning in the car. It looks like more trouble than what it's worth. I don't really mind it that much being tucked away in there. It is black and it's tucked in the corner. So I think there's bigger, bigger issues to take care of here like all these rusty uh, brake lines and stuff like that. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna remove this and then we're gonna have to remove this, remove this bolt because that's where the fuel pressure regulator is gonna mount. So yeah, let's get to work. Yeah, so I tried to loosen this up and this line actually is like completely rusted through. Well, I don't know if it was completely rusted through, but it was definitely weakened from the rust and it just completely split. So, uh, trying to catch the fuel here, but I think I'm just gonna unbolt this and then pull it off.
Okay, so we got the little plastic clip removed, so we can kind of move these around a little bit. So I should be able to get a cutter on here and cut this off fairly easily. And now we're just going to remove this bolt here so that we can mount our fuel pressure regulator. And we also have to remove this little bracket here. It's no longer used and it will interfere with the mounting location of our fuel pressure regulator. We do have to remove this bracket that the fuel pressure regulator shipped with so that we can use the K-Tune bracket that allows us to mount the fuel pressure regulator to our shock tower. So there we go, we got the K-Tune bracket on that allows you to mount it to that shock tower there. So K-Tune in the directions, they say to add Teflon tape to the fittings on the fuel pressure regulator. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now and we'll tighten these up a little bit too. So the cut came out really good, but there's this like rubberized coating on here. So I tried to fit up the K-Tune line and it doesn't seem like it wants to go in there with the rubberized coating. So I'm gonna try to take my tool here and just cut the coating and then see if I can slip some of it off and we'll see how that turns out. the tool a little bit to put a little slit in the rubber, heated it up, and the rubber came right off. And now we have a nice point to mount our K-Tune line on. Okay, so I actually had to cut this line much shorter just because this was just not lining up at all with it pointing straight up still. So I got that cut to where I think I like it. Then this one, I removed the other rubber line. I think we're just gonna hook it up. But as you can see, it's too long right now. So we're gonna cut this shorter. Then we're also gonna have to cut this one shorter because oh, if I tuck it in here, it's, yeah, it's too long. So I'm gonna mark both these lines and then we're gonna cut them and then we'll be able to mount them on there.
So we got the fuel pressure regulator, fuel lines all buttoned up here. So I think still some time today. So I think I'm gonna install that rear mount right there. So I have it over here, the hot support mount. Got the three bolts out of the bag. So we're gonna go ahead and bolt that on, save some time later, because we'll need this on anyway before we put the engine in. So there we go, got the mount on, so one less thing we have to do later on. So we got a little bit done today. There's not really much left to do. Um, next, we gotta drop the engine, then we can wire it up and hopefully this thing will start. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time when we put the engine in.